We are going to start with the Detroit Lions. Uh, at 4 p.m. today, the cuts the acts. are taking place. So yeah. You go from 90 to 85, guys. Got to get Got down it. to 85. Dan Campbell, you know, he's been in this situation as a player and in, as an assistant coach. I'm sure as an assistant coach, he grew fond of yeah. guys that he was coaching in his p position group. He knows this is always a tough day, but it's it is tough. much different, Braylon. Yeah when you're the head coach yeah. and you are making these decisions. Yeah, it's always a tough time because, you know, as a head coach or well, as a player, it's tough to watch guys. Let's, let's say from my standpoint of view where I knew I was a guy that was starting, I didn't have to worry about the ax man coming down in the first six years of my career. It's tough to build a relationship with players and they become friends and you may know them before they get to the team or you may develop something during training camp, uh, be it a similar place you grew up, similar college, similar position. And when you see the Turk coming. We call him the Turk. The Turk is the guy that works for, you know, the front office and he comes down there and he comes to your locker and he says, hey, uh, Ryan, you know, coach would like to see you. Well, I want you to bring your playbook. We used to hate seeing that guy coming because it meant that a guy's dreams were potentially over and they were shattered. Now for a guy like Dan Campbell, who's the coach, he builds a relationship with these guys, man. He expects a lot out of them, man. He, he puts in time. He talks to them. He likes them. He watches them grow in the process of OTAs and training camp. And he sees guys take his tutelage under advisement and try to implement what he's coaching. And then you have to tell that player, Ryan, or you have to tell the meeting room or the 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 uh, the, the front office. They come to you and say, "We're going to get rid of this guy." Oh, it's a blow. So and it's the tough. closest I'll ever get to that Braylon is uh, watching Hard Knocks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the closest yeah. I'll ever get to that. Uh, he was Hard Knocks himself uh, with the Jets. We, uh, we did do it in 2010. It Who's the fun. Turk on the Jets? Did you got? Did you know him? Yeah, you always know him. I was going to say, he didn't know him. Well, you knew him. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah it's, it's, he knew him. it's usually a guy that's you know coming up the ranks in the front office. So he's a guy, he might be a scout. You know, He might be a guy that's working underneath you know, as a PA for the president or a PA for the GM. So he's a guy you know. And you see him floating around, you're kind of like. <laughs> you want to walk the other way. To close your eyes. Any guys uh, get cut? Uh, but lots of guys got cut during your career. Yeah. Anybody like special to you that, that it hurt you the most to yeah. see him go? Yeah, when we were, um, this is when I was in, in New York uh, in 2010, we bought back Lavernius Coles. And Lavernius Coles is an icon. Well, no, I don't want to say icon, but he's a really big figure in New York Jet football. Like, he had some really good years there, the Vinny Testaverde years, sure. when they went to the AFC Championship uh, back in, in the early 2000s. Like he became like a big brother figure. Like, you know, he, the way he talked about football, the way he talked about life, he gave us life lessons. He was the old man in the room. And, you know, when he got cut, although he didn't care, he was there for a reason, for a purpose. Like, that one was, it was kind of tight. It was tight. It hurt when Lavernius left because then I became the old man. So I think maybe that's <laughs> what it really was. Well, they're going from 90 to, yeah. to 85. The, the cut down is officially at 4 o'clock, the deadline coming up today. But Dan Campbell had this to say about the emotions of making these roster cuts. Take a listen. Yeah, well, I, look, that's always tough. You know, we've already had to make a couple of tough decisions. Uh, and, you know, these guys that are out here, you know, working the rear off and giving everything they've got, man, you, you know, you, uh, you're always mindful of that and you appreciate that, but it is, it's a hard business, you know. Um, but I think everything from our standpoint is how do we get ourselves twofold, number one, ready for San Francisco and, and then also continue to evaluate um, who's going to be on this roster, who we think can make this roster and help us win. So... Uh, I think that's the focus this week. And one of the guys uh, who is being widely talked about, mm. can he help this football team or not, is a former second-round pick, the linebacker Jelani Tavai. Uh, and he, in my opinion, <laughs> he looked terrible in that yeah. first. He looked like he didn't know where he was supposed to be. Did, like just to, Forget about making tackles. Yeah. He looked like he didn't even know where he was supposed to stand on the football field. Yeah. But Dave Burkett of the Detroit Free Press came out with a uh, column today and said that not only do they expect John uh -oh. Tavai to survive this round of cuts, uh, the linebacker coach expects 
to vie to make the football team the 53-man roster. Now, is he just blowing smoke, or is this him actually giving his real spill? Because if he's not blowing smoke, then I'm confused. Uh, Jelani Tavai, in his first two years, uh, nobody really was high on him when we drafted him. A lot of guys were upset with the pick. Uh, if you look back, you know, I was talking to Maz. We got a couple guys before we get into you know, what Jelani Tavai has done in his first two years, this being his third year. Like, we drafted him, and we passed on some guys. Am I right, Matt? Oh, man. You're not Should kidding. I cover my ears now? Yeah, no. listen. Is this the time of the show this, where this I cover is, my ears? Is, hey, hey, you know it, man. Number 43 was Jelani Tavai in the second round. That's what number he went. If you remember, ESPN and NFL Network didn't even have any video on this they guy had at that no point. no stats, no nothing. Nothing at that Can point. Can I open up my ears yet? No, you not yet. yet? The, open them up. <laughs> So these are just just a few names. I'm just going to throw a couple on who we missed out on oh, by and we're to oh, AJ Brown, the wide receiver who's player. a monster down monster. there in Tennessee Titans. Well, with the Tennessee Titans, Mikael Hardman, the speedster out there in uh, Kansas, Kansas City, City with the Chiefs, number 17. I like that number, by the way. <laughs> and then you got the real beast out there in Seattle who actually just ran in an Olympic race. DK Metcalf. Now that's silly. Can I stop you there? And we needed a wide receiver, by the way, at that time. You look at DK Metcalf, and you go back to those times where he was, yeah. you know, uh, of course, the off the field uh, issues. You know, did he love football? Is he? No. Uh, it's it's all garbage. Yeah, it, it's it, all garbage. Can the guy play football or not? Those are three guys that we missed on. But getting back to Jelani Tavai, the big thing that I see is hey, there's a few more. Yeah, is, well, let me get back. I'm gonna let you do. The, I'm gonna let you get those in. Is Jelani Tavai blew up to 270 when we drafted him, so he wasn't able to play laterally. He wasn't able to have explosion. He wasn't able to be quick. And a lot of times, you saw him getting, you know, beat and looking kind of unathletic. So he loses the weight this year, and he's down. I want to say about 25 pounds or so mass. I think he's down 25 pounds. Oh yeah. You watched the first game this past Friday. He's still out of place. He's still getting outrun. He's still looking, like you said, kind of in a state of bewilderment. Like he doesn't know where to be. He just doesn't look like he has the capability to do anything outside of run straight ahead. You mentioned something, though, too, that I think really is highlighted in the NFL. Yeah. And if anybody on this desk can speak to it, you can. How important is it to get drafted by a team that suits you. Yeah. I mean, you talk about Jelani Tavai. He, he, he gets drafted by the Lions. He's got to gain 25 pounds. Yeah. Then they have a coaching change and a regime change. Then he's got to lose 25 pounds. Where you get drafted, I'm talking about the location yeah. of where you get drafted, is every bit as important as anything to career success almost. Oh, man, 100%. Look at a guy like a John Lynch, okay? John Lynch, who's a... An all, he's an he's an All Pro Hall of Fame uh, safety. Where the Tennessee, I mean, for the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers as well as the Denver Broncos, mm. he was a slow white guy, but he was good straight ahead. Very physical guy and extremely smart. Had some athletic abilities. You saw from every once in a while with a strip sack or a uh, an interception. If he doesn't get drafted by Tony Dungy's Tampa Bay defense. That Tampa 2. That Tampa 2, <laughs> which allowed him to not have to be an athlete. He didn't have to play in cover three a lot. He didn't have to play in cover four. He didn't have to be the athlete that an Ed Reed is, that a Troy Palomalu is. And then when he leaves Tampa after 16 years, they take that same defense, or he plays for the same type of defense in Denver. He's still playing in that Tampa 2 defense as his athletic ability and age is diminishing. He had a Hall of Fame career career in a defense that suited his athletic ability and smarts if you put him in a Baltimore Ravens defense he would not have had the same career so to your point it matters where you go and how you can be utilized and we talked earlier today uh, about Kyle Van Noy I brought yeah. him up to you Good how point. he could be so bad here that they give up they give him up for a seventh round pick he goes to New England and leads that team in tackles for a few years. Yeah. Kyle definitely. Van Noy, a uh, second round pick. I want to stick with this. Something if, about playing for a ring versus playing for yeah. Well, <laughs> for I, I, I want to stick with this if, he, if I can because I have, a, I have a great player who, if drafted by the right team, he may have been in the Hall of Fame. I'm going to get to that next, plus Dan Dickerson coming up in about 40 minutes. We are Ermani and Edwards. This is the bottom line on Woodward Sports Network. Why real?
realtors love using Hall Financial as a lender because of our commitment to speed and service. We have nearly 4,000 five-star reviews already. Call today, 248-308-5000 or go to callhallfirst.com.